Hi everyone, what's going on? It's time to talk about animals again. We normally feature the animals I encounter from Africa, South America, Australia, and all over the world. But you know, now is a bit different. We're going nowhere. We're staying in Hong Kong. Today I'm going to be talking about our native species. This video is for Sarah from French International School who asked me to talk about Hong Kong wildlife for her students. We are always based in Hong Kong, but the environment around our place is pretty much the opposite of the typical Hong Kong. We are located at the peak of a very quiet mountain. The roads to here are mostly hiking trails. In here, we see wild animals more than we see people, until lately. You know, all of a sudden, everyone hides. The mountain's never been busier than now. If you will go on a hike, other than enjoying the scenic trails, you may also want to keep your eyes and ears open. This is the season that animals are starting to show up more. Hong Kong is not big, but it's surprisingly rich in biodiversity. I love African animals myself, but when I'm home, I enjoy discovering and recording local mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, bugs, and plants. There are way too many species to mention now in here. I'm going to be introducing only two species of each group, together with my photographs of them. Let's get started with the smallest in size, but the biggest in numbers, the bucks. This is a flatted plant hopper, Loana imitata, or commonly known as white moth buck. I found these in northern Fenling New Territories. It can also be found in China and Vietnam. They live in trees. Adults are active from May to October. I think they look so elegant and beautiful, but farmers just hate them because they drink plant juices from stems to leaves to fruits. This species is considered a pest of citrus, tea, mango, guava, grape, lychee, and cashew. One of the most common spiders in Hong Kong, Nephila pilipis, or giant golden orb weaver can be found in primary and secondary forests almost anywhere in Hong Kong. This species has a wide distribution throughout Asia, from China, Japan, Vietnam, Cambodia, Taiwan, Malaysia, Singapore, Myanmar, Indonesia, Thailand, Laos, the Philippines, Sri Lanka, India, Nepal, and also Papua New Guinea and Australia. They may look creepy to you, but don't you worry when you find them next time. They are basically harmless to humans. They just eat bugs. But they do get big. This is the largest spider in Hong Kong. Well, I mean just the ladies. Sexual dimorphism is obvious in this species. Good example of female gigantism and male dwarfism. Females can grow up to 20 centimeters, while males can be 10 times smaller. So next time when you're on a hike, fighting a big and small spiders together, they may not be mother and son, but a loving couple. One of the most common lizards in Hong Kong is Calotis versicolor. It has many common names, changeable lizard, crested tree lizard, oriental garden lizard, eastern garden lizard, and even bloodsucker. Very common throughout Hong Kong, including all major islands. It is also widely distributed in Asia. This lizard can grow up to 40 centimeters. They are sun-loving lizards, can often be found basking in the middle of the day. They are not chameleons, but there are similarities. Males can change to bright red in the throat, the entire head, or parts of the body during breeding season. They can also move each of the eyes in different directions, just like the chameleons. The bamboo pit fiber, or white lipid pit fiber, is the most common venomous snake in Hong Kong. It can be found in forests, mountains, wetlands, and many different habitats. This species can also be found in southern China, Indonesia, Nepal, India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. A small to medium-sized snake growing to 50 to 90 centimeters. This is a nocturnal species. Even in total darkness, they can catch the prey by using their heat sensing pits below the eyes which most snakes don't have. That's why they're called pit vipers. Their bites are painful 
and can cause swelling. The venom is not deadly to humans, but is strong enough to kill the prey such as small mammals, frogs, and lizards. The Chinese Three-Striped Box Turtle, or better known as Golden Coin Turtle in Chinese, used to be very common when I was a kid, which I refused to provide a number of years ago, but now have become critically endangered due to habitat destruction and poaching. This species is very rare, but widely distributed in few localities in Hong Kong and southern China. I have only found a few of them in mountain streams throughout the years. Unlike most turtles, this is a nocturnal species. They hide very well during daytime. They grow up to 20 centimeters. As carnivores, they feed on insects, fish, frogs, crabs, and snails. The plastron, bottom shell, is what makes this turtle special. There is a hinge in the middle to allow complete closure of the shell. Then, they can completely box up inside to escape predators. That's why they're called box turtles. But the plastron is also the reason why they got killed by humans to make a Chinese medicine called turtle jelly. Did you know that sea turtles would come to Hong Kong? There are seven species of sea turtles in the world, and surprisingly, all of them have been spotted in Hong Kong waters. How amazing! Our most frequent visitor is Chilonian Midas, the green sea turtle. Young turtles are carnivores, preying on crabs, shrimps, jellyfish, and squid. Adults are herbivores, feeding on seaweed. It is an endangered species, but can be found in all tropical oceans around the world, including Hong Kong. They even came ashore. Shame Wan in Lama Island has a small population known to nest on a regular basis. Only two records of nesting outside Lemma Island. Once in Big Wave Bay Beach, Shekko in 2000. Another time in another Big Wave Bay, Tai Long Wan Beach, Saikong in 2006. Oh, those mama turtles must be surfers. They love big waves. We have many frogs, but only one tailed amphibian. The Hong Kong Newt, Parametro Triton Hong Kong Gansis. I have usually found them in clean mountain streams in Lantau, Hong Kong Island, and the eastern and northern parts of New Territories. It was once believed to be an endemic species of Hong Kong, but later also found in Guangdong province in China. They grow to around 15 centimeters, very slow-moving carnivores, so they mainly prey on earthworms and tadpoles. When hungry, they even eat eggs of their own kind. Basically nocturnal, but they also come out in daytime in a large group during breeding season. I have seen more than 100 of them crawling on land at a time. This cutie pie is a spotted narrow mouth frog. In Hong Kong, they are only found in Northern New Territories, but not Lantau, Kowloon, or Hong Kong Island. I found this one in Fen Ling. They can also be found in Southern China, Myanmar, Vietnam, and Thailand. Their habitats are forest, cultivated lands, and grasslands. With such a small mouth, they mainly feed on ants. The red-billed blue magpie is a resident bird in Hong Kong, pretty common and widespread, especially in mid-levels on Hong Kong Island. This is one of them having fun right outside our place these days. So I was just taking these snapshots while having coffee outside. Identifying this bird is very easy. Its tail is longer than any other birds you can find in Hong Kong. This species is also found in Western human layers, Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, and China. They live in mountains and forests, feed on invertebrates, seeds, and fruits. They rob nets too. In this photo, this is a Eurasian eagle lao, Bubu Bubu. I was so lucky to have found it in Yunlong, New Territories. It is rare but widely distributed throughout Hong Kong. It can also be found in Central Asia, Russia, all the way to Europe. This is the largest owl, not just in Hong Kong, but in the world. It can grow to 75 centimeters with a wingspan of 188 centimeters. 
The boo 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 is not just big, but lives long too. It can live over 25 years, while some other owls have a lifespan less than four years. If you will go on a night hike, this is possibly the easiest animal to spot. The porcupine in Hong Kong is the Malayan porcupine, Hystric Brachuora. I found these spiky fellows in Kowloon Peak. It has become more common in the mid-levels along Black's Lane, Bowen Row, and the Peak, also in mountains in new territories. Porcupines are not hedgehogs. No, they are not sonic. They are large rodents covered with long quills all over the rear part of the body. The quills are hard and sharp, but they are actually hairs. Some modified hairs coated with a lot of keratin. You may have heard of porcupine shooting spines at predators. Hmm, very exciting. Unfortunately, it's not true. They can shoot. They cannot shoot quills, but we don't have to worry about them. When there are predators, they will raise up their long, sharp quills and run backwards towards the predators. When the quills are touched, they can be released and stuck in the predator's body. Ouch! What if they are so unlucky to meet many predators the same night? Will they lose all the quills and become a guinea pig? No, they can regrow new quills. An other mammal I chose has a lot in common with the porcupine. It is also nocturnal, slow moving, and with a high protection of the body made out of keratin. But unlike a porcupine, this one is rare. Did you know that we have pangolins in Hong Kong? Pangolins specialize in eating ants and termites with a long sticky tongue. They are the only mammals with scales all over their body. They were thought to be related to armadillos, anteaters, and sloths in the past, but new studies suggest that they are unique mammal, not related to anything that looks alike. There are eight species of pangolin found in Asia and Africa. The Chinese pangolin Manis pandadactyla, the most trafficked mammals in the world. They used to be a lot more common back in the days. We could find them from time to time, but now you have to be super lucky to just find one. Thanks to deforestation and poaching for the meat and scales to be used in traditional medicines. What for? Hysterical crying in children and women thought to be possessed by devils. What do you say? Dusty frill goby is widely distributed in Hong Kong in the creeks with sand and rubble, open reefs and soft corals. The species is also found in the Indo-Pacific region from South Africa to the Red Sea East to Tonga, south to Australia, and north to Japan. It is primarily a coastal species, but will migrate and move into freshwater streams during their life cycle. Not a big fish, it grows to only 10 to 12 centimeters, but is a carnivore preying on other fish and crustaceans like shrimps. The gobies is one of the largest fish families, comprising more than 2,000 species. Some are bigger than 30 centimeters, some are smaller than one centimeter. Some can even change gender. How intriguing. The next fish I chose doesn't look too fishy to me. It's more like eelish. Should I call it Billy? I'm talking about a fish, the Japanese eel. Of course, it lives in Japan. But this species is also native to Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, Korea, Vietnam, and the Philippines. It can grow to one meter long. Like other eels, the Japanese eel is a carnivore preying on crustaceans like shrimps, aquatic insects, and small fishes. The Japanese eel is not common in Hong Kong waters. One of the few localities it has ever been found is Tai Ho Stream in Lantau Island. But if you really want to see it, I know some places with a guaranteed sighting and a close encounter not the aquariums. They go by a fancy name, 
Kabayaki, commonly available in all Japanese restaurants. Can you believe it? The Japanese eel is an endangered species. What do you say? The next one is exciting. Let me introduce to you the Hong Kong chameleon. Excuse me. The Hong Kong chameleon. What? Plants are wildlife. Plants are so important, they give us oxygen. Camellia Hong Kongensis is a small evergreen tree that grows to 10 meters tall. There are 10 native camellia species, and this is the only one that bears red flowers. First discovered in 1849, when three individuals were found in Victoria Peak. It was later found in Mount Nicholson, Mount Parker, and Park Fu Lam. It is also found in Guangdong province. Now this is still an endangered species, so we should really be careful and responsible when going on a hike at the peak and other mountains in Hong Kong. Last but not least, to represent Hong Kong, how can I not choose Bohemia explicana, the Hong Kong orchid? This unique plant is endemic to Hong Kong and can be found in western Hong Kong islands such as Park Fu Lam. It is sterile. It does not produce seeds and fruits. Propagation is by air layering, cuttings, and grafting. The X in its scientific name means this is not an ordinary species. This is a hybrid between Bohemia variegata and Bohemia purpura. Such oneness can be found nowhere else in the world, just in the A52.